Victoria Naule, and here with me is Mr. Abdul Rahman. Uh, today's discussion will focus on Somalia, specifically answering the question as to whether the people in that country are benefiting from their oil and gas resources. Uh, Mr. Abdul, would you like to introduce yourself? Well, uh, first of all, I would like to thank you for inviting me to the program. Uh, I've heard a lot about your program. I'm honored to participate in it. Um, to introduce myself, my name is Abdul Abdurrahman. I'm a practicing attorney in the United States. Uh, I've been a partner in a law firm for the last 15 years. Uh, previously, we have, uh, uh, in my law practice, we have dealt with issues of federal immigration law, criminal law, civil law, and family law. Uh, at this time, I am at the uh, University of Dundee, studying energy law and, uh, and policy. And uh, the reason why I'm studying this is uh, because I have at times served as a legal advisor to the Somali government in the extractive industries, and I felt that this was something I needed to do. Thank you very much for the introduction. Before we start on the discussion about the oil and gas sector in Somalia, I would like you to give us a brief overview of the sector and the political situation there. Well, Somalia, um, Somalia is not new to exploration for hydrocarbons. Uh, in fact, exploration in Somalia has been going on since, I believe, 1945. Um, however, uh, because of uh, the, uh, civil war in the last uh, 25 to 30 years and its after effects, uh, Somalia has basically done nothing with regard to uh, exploiting its natural resources. Uh, recently, there has been some seismic uh, studies offshore Somalia, and Somalia has been, um, um, you know, identified as uh, possibly containing very sizable deposits of oil, as opposed to gas. Thank you very much for the overview. My next question will be with regard to the legal and institution framework governing the oil and gas sector in Somalia. Uh, could you please take us through the legal framework in the Somali oil and gas sector? Uh, legal framework in Somalia is uh, at the beginning of, um, uh, uh, it's at the beginning. And Somalia is very much behind other countries in the region, you know, Mozambique, Kenya, Tanzania, Uganda, uh, Sudan, South Sudan, and probably Ethiopia, uh, which we do not know a lot about. And, and the reason is, again, because of the Somali status as a country emerging from civil war. What we do know is that Somalia has a 2008 petroleum law. Uh, that law was being updated. Uh, I do remember there was a version of a 2013 petroleum law. I don't believe that was ever brought before the parliament for a vote. Uh, currently, there, is, uh, there exists a 2016 petroleum law, and uh, that law, I don't believe, has also been passed yet. But essentially what Somalia is aiming to do is come up with a petroleum law that kind of meets the concerns of the international community because Somalia would like to uh, attract investment. Thank you very much. And what about the institution framework? What kind of institutions are there in Somalia governing the oil and gas sector? The, there are Somali institutions. For example, the government uh, has a specific ministry that deals with uh, uh, you know, extractive industries. There is a Somali Petroleum uh, Min and Mineral Resources Ministry. Uh, there, there is also a Somali Oil Company. There is a Somali uh, Oil Authority. And uh, these different bodies uh, were set up to advance the government's agenda with regard to um, uh, the institutional framework. Uh, the legal framework is a little bit behind, as I've said, we don't really know what is the capacity of, for example, the Somali Oil Company yeah. or the Somali uh, Oil Authority, uh, which would be uh, uh, the regulatory agency that would be regulating the industry. Um, we do know that the Somali Oil Company is, is slated to take 10% of any oil blocks that uh, are given out. Uh, however, there have not been any um, you know, auctions or bid rounds uh, with regard to Somalia. Uh, so those things, uh, Somalia is still feeling its way uh, around it. Then there is the issue also of the fact that uh, Somalia has a federal uh, infrastructure that is kind of devolved. Okay. And there are member states that have their own 
institutions for management of uh, extractive industries. The, the synergy between the federal government and the member states is not very clear yet. Uh, there is no revenue sharing framework in place uh, that we know of. And um, I think part of the problem would be issues of um, visibility. We really don't know exactly what's going on. Oh, thank you very much. I, well, we all know that for a country to function very well, they need a strong legal and regulatory framework uh, on top of the institutions. That's something that is really lacking in many African countries and that's something that Somal Somalia definitely has to work on. So I'll go on my next question, which is really very important because this is the question that has been addressed by officials from other countries in my previous interviews, for instance from Somal from South Sudan, from Nigeria, from Ghana. And then I'll raise the same question to Mr. Abdul. Do you think that the people of Somalia are benefiting from the oil and gas sector? And if not, what should be the way forward? At this point, um, and I would say no. Somalis have not benefited from the oil and gas industry or the mining uh, sector as well. Um, those, uh, you know, those industries do not really exist. What exists is an understanding with some of the international oil companies that have been active in Somalia, specifically Shell Oil Company, has financed scholarships for Somali students. And that has been a benefit to some of the young people. It's both giving an opportunity uh, to young Somalis, but it's also building uh, human capacity for Somalia. Uh, if indeed those young students, once they graduate, do come back and you know, get jobs and take part in the industry. Uh, with regard to the benefit of the people as a whole, uh, we haven't seen any benefit because the country hasn't produced anything yet. Uh, no oil has been produced, uh, no minerals have been produced and marketed yet. At this point, Somalia is at the beginning of the industrial curve. Okay. So, um, but there is a lot of optimism. All right. Uh... What do you think? What do you think would be the way forward in case Somalia starts producing the oil? How do you think the people should benefit? What would your advice be to the government and the Somali people in order for them to benefit from the oil and gas industry? Well, there is always a challenge uh, when uh, countries have revenues from. Um, the extractive industries. Uh, a lot of times there's a, a detrimental effect on, uh, on the national economy uh, and also on governments themselves. Uh, my suggestion would be that there is some sort of a framework where there is revenue sharing and also some sort of framework that encourages um, transparency. You know, I know that Somalia has been uh, making contacts with the EITI on the issues of transparency. Uh, they have been in contact with Revenue Watch with regard to revenue uh, management, but it's not enough to make contacts. You have to follow through. And essentially, Somali is to instill confidence in the people. They have to publish what you earn, yes. you know, so that people know that this is what's coming in, this is how it's used. And also, Somalia has to really put into place the Revenue Sharing Act so that the federal government and the member states have a revenue sharing bill in place that shows the people how the revenues are moving through the economy and through the country. Uh, thank you very much. Actually, he has raised very important issues regarding revenue management, governance and also transparency. Because you noticed in the previous discussions, those are some of the issues that were pinpointed by our previous presenters. So, as for Somalia, as for South Sudan, Nigeria, we need to fight corruption. And to fight corruption, we need good governance, we need transparency. It's very key for people to know how much they are getting from the oil industries and how that money is being used. We need to see infrastructure in these countries. The revenue from the oil and gas sector should reflect the infrastructure in the country. 
Uh, this brings me to my last question because it's important to empower the young Africans out there. So what would your advice be to the young Africans out there, specifically those from Somalia? Well, first I want to thank you for raising the issue of corruption. Yes. In, in, uh, and it's very true. Uh, corruption not only uh, wastes revenue, but it takes confidence mm -hmm. in the system. Uh, you know, from from the people. Uh, with regard to advice to the young Somalis, uh, I would like to see more young Somalis pursue uh, skills in the oil and gas industry. Uh, I would like to see more Somali lawyers involved in in the specialized contracts in the industry. I would like to see more Somali engineers that are involved in both geology and uh, reservoir management and. Uh, reservoir drilling and uh, uh, that kind of a thing. And I would also like to see Somalis involved in the management of uh, uh, these resources, whether they're uh, you know, de people dealing with project finance, people dealing with uh, um, revenues, accountants, uh, auditors, uh, that kind of thing. Uh, because it's a very complex industry and uh, there have been very serious challenges in the extractive industries. You know, the, 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 the companies do not do you any favors. You know, the companies are in the business of making money. And in, in their pursuit of money and maximizing their revenues, there have been issues of, uh, you know, transfer pricing and money that's taken from countries. If you don't have the capacity within a country where you can audit the books rightly, where you can manage the revenues, where you can uh, properly manage your fiscal and tax regimes, then uh, the country is not going to benefit and the people are not going to benefit. So I would like to see the young people pursue careers that build uh, capacity in the country. Thank you very much. And maybe I would like you to highlight on the issue of peace and unity in the country, because I, I realize in some African countries which are destabilized, it's because the people are not united. What do you have to say about that uh, with regard to Somalia? especially while advising the, the young Africans out there? Well, I would say, uh, you know, Somalia has had its shares of uh, uh, troubles and uh, peace is slowly coming back to Somalia. And for young Africans out there, I would say learn from the lessons of Somalia. There is no benefit to conflict based on tribalism or clanism or sectarianism or uh, identity politics. Um, you know, peace is very, very important. And if there is peace, then industries flourish. And if industries flourish, there will be development. And if there is development, everybody will gain. And I would suggest that young Somalis, young Africans, that they concentrate on, on developing themselves as people instead of uh, you know, looking at what the other people have or what problems there are. You know, peace is very important. It's time we need to compete with the world. We don't need to compete with each other. Thank you very much for the wonderful interview and discussion. Uh, maybe you can remind our viewers of uh, your contacts, those who would want to contact you, be it in the U.S., Somalia, if you have business, if you want to have any information, further information about the oil and gas sector of Somalia, you can always contact Mr. Abdul. Do you want to remind them about your contacts and the law firm you work with? Yeah, I work for the law firm of Bausch, Abdurrahman & Associates. It's based in West Hartford, Connecticut, in the United States. I'm a senior partner in that law firm. I also serve as an advisor to the Somali Petroleum Ministry. Um, and uh, at this point, I will be at the University of Dundee uh, at the Center for Energy, Petroleum, Mining, and Law and Policy for at least the next six months. And uh, you know, for anybody who would like to contact me, um, you can contact me at my email address uh, Abdul Halim at batmlaw.com. Thank you very much, Mr. Abdul. Don't forget to subscribe, and we'll be bringing you more interviews from different officials in Africa regarding the oil, gas, and mining sector. Thank you very much. Bye bye.